Hi ladies, welcome back to the Holistic Approach where we discuss how your physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health, amongst other things, are interconnected and play a major role in your overall well-being. My name is Funke, also known as the Curvy Nurse, and I am an RMBSN and also a Master's Level Certified Health Educator. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can learn more about health, beauty, lifestyle, and entrepreneurship and also hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. Did you know that 24 states, including DC, require sexual health education? 37 states require that that sexual health education must include abstinence. And 26 states require that abstinence be stressed. And only 13 states require that sexual health education be medically accurate. 18 states, including DC, require that one sexual health education is taught that contraception is included. And there are also states that require the AOUM education, which is the abstinence only until marriage education, which hasn't been proven to prevent teen pregnancy or risky sexual behaviors. A comprehensive sexual education is more ideal because it provides medically accurate and age appropriate information. The sexual health education that I will provide is truthful and objective and it will help guide you in making the right choices with respect to your body. Reproduction is a process by which organisms make more organisms like themselves. In the human reproductive process, there are two sex cells called gametes. The male gamete is called the sperm and the female gamete is called the egg or ovum. And each of these gametes contain characteristics called genes. These genes make it that each fetus is similar to that of their family, but also makes them unique. For reproduction to occur, the sperm must meet the egg in the female's reproductive system. The fertilized egg is called the zygote. The zygote then goes through the process of becoming an embryo, which then later becomes the fetus. So today we're going to talk about the anatomy of the female reproductive system. Stay tuned so we can get started. The female reproductive anatomy includes both external and internal structures. The function of the external female reproductive structures is twofold. To enable sperm to enter the body and to protect the internal genital organs from infectious organisms. The main external structures of the female reproductive system includes the vulva, which makes up the mons pubis over the pubic bone the labia majora, and the labia minora. The labia majora, also known as the large lips, encloses and protects the other external reproductive organs. During puberty, hair growth occurs on the skin of the labia majora, which also contains sweat and all secreting glands. Labia minora, also known as the small lips, is very delicate and can come in a variety of sizes and shapes. They are found inside the labia majora, both surround the vestibule, which contains the vaginal opening and the urethra. The clitoris, is where the two labias meet. It is a small and sensitive protrusion that is comparable to the penis in males. The clitoris is covered by a fold of skin called the prepuce, which is similar to the foreskin at the end of the penis. The clitoris is very sensitive to stimulation and can become erect. The Bartholin's gland are located next to the vaginal opening on each side and produce a fluid secretion. Please note the difference between the vagina and the urethra. The urethra opening is connected to the bladder and it is where urine is removed from the body. Now to the internal reproductive organs, which include the bladder, which is a muscular organ that stores urine from the kidneys before excretion, also known as urination, and it sits anterior or in front of the uterus. Vagina is also known as the vaginal canal. It joins the cervix, which is the lower part of the uterus, to the outside of the female genitalia. It is how menstrual blood and babies leave the body, and it's also how sperm enters the body. The cervix. Opening of the cervix is very small in diameter, no wider than the hole of a straw. During childbirth, the cervix can expand to allow a baby to pass through. The uterus sits posterior or behind the bladder and anterior or in front of the rectum. It is divided in two parts, the cervix and the corpus. The corpus, which is the main body of the uterus, can easily expand to hold a developing baby. It is made up of three layers, the perimetrium, which is a smooth outer layer, the myometrium, which is the middle layer of muscle that contracts during labor, and the endometrium, which is the innermost layer, where an egg implants itself during ovulation. 
If implantation doesn't occur, that layer is released during the first phase of the menstrual cycle. The ovaries. The ovaries are small oval shaped glands that are located on either side of the uterus. They produce and release female gametes, also known as ovum, and sex hormones like estrogen and progesterone. Each ovary contains a cortex that holds the developing ovum and the medulla that contains blood vessels and nerves. The fimbriae are finger-like structures that pick up the released ovum or egg cells from the ovaries to the uterus through the fallopian tubes. Fertilization of an egg by a sperm normally occurs in the fallopian tubes. The fertilized egg then moves to the uterus where it implants in the uterine lining. If implantation doesn't occur, that layer is released during the first phase of the menstrual cycle. The grafting follicle, also known as the ovarian follicle. Females are born with all of their primary ovarian follicles at birth. Females begin puberty with about 400,000 follicles each with the potential to release an egg cell. So I really hope you gained some information about the anatomy of the female reproductive system. I would like to know what are the biggest misconceptions that you've heard about the reproductive system or just sexual health overall? Leave a comment down below and let's discuss. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video and you gained some information. If you liked today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when I upload new videos on holistic health, beauty, lifestyle, entrepreneurship. If you have any suggestions or topics that you would love to be discussed on my channel, please leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to get right to it. Also, don't forget that you can shop on the website iyanuscrubs.com for the Yoni Pearl Necklace and the ID badge holder. Thank you for joining me at The Holistic Approach and I will see you at your next Holistic Health Appointment. Bye!